Hello again everybody. Today I'm going to show you a tutorial and a performance for what I think is a really cool but you guys might think is an overly complicated mathematical card trick. This is called the 27 card trick. It's performed by Matt Parker. You can click on the link here. It's also in the description box below. He's a brilliant stand-up mathematician and I really like this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little performance and then I will show you how it's done. For this trick we're going to use 27 cards. We're going to tell the spectator they can look at the card and they can select any card they want. It's a free choice. So let's say the spectator chooses the nine of diamonds. Now we can have them shuffle the cards. While they're shuffling, we'll ask the spectator, do you have a favorite number between one and 27? The spectator says 17. Is there any reason why you like number 17? Well, that's my birthday. Okay, I'm gonna just deal out, memorize where your card is. The nine of diamonds is right there. Don't forget your card and just tell me what pile your card is in and uh, they say that their card is right over here, so we'll do it one more time, a second time, ask the spectator to tell me what pile their card is in, and there's the Knight of Diamonds right there. Okay, so we'll take the piles, and then the last time, we'll do it one more time, and we'll ask the spectator to watch and notice where his card is, and the Knight of Diamonds is right over there. So, now we turn over the piles and we say to the spectator, okay, I have no idea what your card is, but let's see, what did you say your favorite number was? Again, I say 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Nine of diamonds. Okay, the way this works, uh, 27 is a cubed number. There are 27 cards, which means 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So if you have three piles of 9 and the spectator's card is in one of the piles, you pick up the cards the first round. There are three rounds that you're going to stack the piles. The first round, you can take the pile with the spectator's card and put it on the top. You could put it in the middle or you could put it on the bottom. You have one of three choices. The same thing with the second round. The pile with the spectator's card you can put on the top, you can put in the middle or on the bottom, and the same thing with the third round, top, middle, or bottom. So having three choices three times is like three cubed. There are 27 possible combinations. Each one of these 27 possible combinations will put the spectator's card in, a ran in one of these spots. So Top, 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 we'll put the spectator's card first. Bottom, 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 we'll put the spectator's card 27th. This looks complicated, but it's actually very easy when the spectator says 17, how you can quickly tell the way you're going to stack it. Now, I'm going to tell you what I did for 17, and then I will go through and teach you. 17, you add the 1 and the 7 together, that gives you 8. 8 is the middle number of the bottom 3. So middle, bottom, and 17 is middle, is the middle 9. Middle, bottom, middle. Okay, that sounded complicated. Let me show it to you. What you're going to do is you need to turn the number into a single digit number. Because what, the third round is where we're going to go with, with the, there are three groups of 9. 1 through 9, 10 through 19, 10 through 18, and 19 through 27. So if the spectator says whatever number they say, if it's the top, the middle, or the bottom, that's what we're going to do the last time. Then if they give us a single digit number, we have to look at the numbers like this. The numbers 1 through 9 are no longer going to be 1 through 9. 1 is the top number of the top group because they're, they're grouped in threes. 1, 2, 3 is the top group. 4, 5, 6 is the middle group. 7, 8, 9 is the bottom group. So 1 is the top number of the top group. 2 is the middle number of the top group. 3 is the bottom number of the top group. 4 is the top number of the middle group. 5 is the middle number of the middle group. 6 is the bottom number of the middle group. And 7 is the top number of the bottom group. 8 is the middle number of the bottom group. And 9 is the bottom number of the bottom group. So, spectator says to you, number 23. What you do is you add 2 plus 3 equals 5. Your number is 23. You know 5 is the middle number of the middle group and 23 is the bottom. So 23, well, you just go middle, middle, bottom. Spectator says number 16. You know 1 and 6 is 7. 7 is the top number of the bottom group, top, bottom, and 17 is in the middle, middle. Spectator says number 4. 4 is the top number of the middle group of the top, top, middle, top. Spectator says 25. 2 and 5 is 7. 7 is the top number of the bottom group, and 25 
is the bottom, top, bottom, bottom. So if you practice this, it becomes very easy. If you say middle, bottom, top, I know the middle of the bottom is eight and top is eight. Middle, bottom, top will be eight. So it's actually very easy. You don't have to memorize this chart. Um, Matt Parker is a brilliant stand-up mathematician and he says this is his favorite card trick. It's a little bit more complicated than the 21 card trick which you can find 14 pages on YouTube uh, videos of the 21 card trick where the card will end up in the 11th position if you stack the cards in the middle every time. Here, oh, one more thing. When you're asking the spectator for their number in the beginning, you want to make sure that you don't make them think that that's going to be a number that's going to be used later on. You make like you're just casually asking them, do you have a favorite number? They say 13. You say, okay, now just remember your card, and then you get back to the number at the end of the trick. You don't want them focusing on that number. You're going to bring it up at the end. And the second thing you have to remember is you deal the cards, they're face down, and you turn them face up, and then when you stack the piles, you have to turn the cards over again and stack them like this. If this is going in the middle, you turn them over just like that. So don't forget, they have to be face down. You turn them face up, and then you turn them back over when you're going to stack them. So give this a try. I know this might be complicated, but I promise if you try it, you will see that it is actually really easy. That's it. I'll see you next time.